All right, all right, all right. I've been hearing a lot of things about scrims as well in the offseason, but I'm not really going to I'm not really going to add that to my guesses. I personally think that preseason scrims are the most useless things ever. Preseason scrims don't tell you anything. Like the patch changes really quickly. Your team on stage is so much different. There's a honeymoon phase in every team. So the first two weeks, most teams do pretty well in scrims. Like you always, you either super underperform or you super overperform in scrims. They're, 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 they're really useless. But from what I've been hearing, I mean, I think a lot of you have been seeing it. G2 is like oh, stomping scrims. Cool, Some of the teams are a bit shaky. Listen, I'm just going to be brutally honest in this tier list, okay? I'm just going to, I'm just going to say exactly what I think. And if you disagree, sure. Like I'm done like giving a fuck. I think a lot of the time, I'm just going to say this for context. I think I was a lot, I was quite reserved on my opinion on pro players and teams over the last year because I had a lot of uh, backlash a lot of the time. I think the more that the social media and the Twitch and the stuff like this grew, the more shit I got for saying my opinions. And so I reserved my opinions and I added a but to everything. You know, I would be like, well, I think Yankos or Caps or, or BB or this person is good, but... And I'd say the but, and I'd put a little bit of a caveat before I said something. Right now, I'm not going to say any fucking caveats. I'm just going to be brutally honest. This is nothing personal to any of the pro players. I think I'm, I'm friends with a lot of them, and I don't want to offend anyone, but I'm just going to be brutally fucking honest, right? Straight off the bat, I'm just going to say that. Because I think this started mainly when I did the LS thing. I got so many fucking messages about people, gonna, like, like people saying they're going to clothesline me on the street. So then I was like, hmm, maybe I shouldn't say my opinion as much anymore. But now it's 2023. I don't give a fuck anymore. If you're going to fucking clothesline me in the street, come at me, bitch. Come clothesline me. Take my fucking nose off, you little pussy ass bitch. If you're going to clothesline me for saying your, your favorite pro player is dog shit, then suck my left nut. All right, let's fucking go. Let's get into it. All right, BDS. Adam Shio, Nuclear Int, Crowning Lebrov. Uh, I think Lebrov is... <clears throat> I think Lebrov's all right. I don't think he's that bad. I don't think he's, he's last place level support. I think he's, he's playoffs level support. Really good solo queue. Really motivated player, I think. Um, I think in support, that's a, that's, a, that's a dub in support. I think upgrade over limit. I'll say that. Crowny. I haven't been following Crowny much. A lot of people have been preaching him to get back into the LEC. Do I think Crowny is like a superstar level AD carry? No. Is Crowny... Did Crowny... When Crowny joined Vitality in 2021 spring, I think it was... He did have a small impact, but not a big one. He's a, he's a good voice. I think at this point, Crown is a veteran, so he can bring a lot of knowledge. And you've got two rookies. Shio was hot on the market. Shio was pretty hot on the market. He, he, him and Yike were the two hotties on the market. Um, because they're, they're, they, were, they were popping off in ERLs, incredibly in solo queue. A lot of pro players are talking about them. They were like the names floating around as like the rookies. So I, I actually think this BDS roster is not that bad. I just think... Um, I, I'm not super sold on Nuclear Int. I feel like this player, is, he's supposed to be their franchise player, but I, I, I don't think he's that good, to be honest. I wouldn't personally choose him as a franchise player, but maybe it's something to do with being a French Orc, French mid laner, something along those lines. I don't know. Uh, but that's, that's what they're going for. Do I think they're last place? Oh yeah, Adam. A lot of people shit on Adam. I even shit on Adam last year as well, uh, in 2021. To be honest, Adam Adam was probably one of the best top laners in ERLs. It's it, maybe you won't believe me, but in 2021 he was top tier. He was he was he was pretty top tier. Or this season, sorry, in 2022. He is playing his champs still, you know what I'm saying? He is playing his champs. His diversity is not there, his flexibility is not there. But if he has a small champ pool and it works, then sure. The problem is that works against bad players, but it doesn't work against good players. Like you can pick Olaf into bad players and clap them. Because they won't be able to, like, they don't know how to play against it. That you, you get fucked. They don't know how to punish Nar, And people can't punish your small champion pool. Is he shit? Well, not really. Is he good? Well, I don't think he's that good either. So, to be honest, I think BDS is... It, it's an upgrade, to be honest. I think it's an upgrade. I think their... I think their bot lane's better. I think Matty Limit were fucking trash. I'm just going to say it. No offense. Like, I'm, I'm just going to say this unfiltered, okay? No offense. No offense, please don't take offense. If you're a pro player, if you're listening to this, um, I'm just going to say it straight up. I think their bot lane was pretty weak. I don't want to say upgrade in jungle, because Syncroft was one, the one player doing a lot on BDS, but I have a lot of faith in Shio. Like, I have a lot of faith in, in, in him actually bringing something to the team. He won't be much of a voice, though. So, yeah. Uh, I will say, I'll put BDS in C- minus for now. I don't think they're last place, but I'll put them in C-. minus. I'm just not sold on their solo lanes. That's the only problem. I'm just not sold on the solo lanes. There we go. TLDR. Astralis, Finn, 113, Dior, Kobe, Younghoon. 
I mean, I think they're probably last place. Like, I'll just say it straight up. 113 has been... I think 113 was a big liability in K-Corp. He was still a good ERL jungler, but he was just really coin flip. Like, he would flip the games like a fucking burger on the spot. This guy would just dive bot for no reason. They would die. He would, he would just walk into enemy jungle and die. He would spam emotes while he's running around griefing. Now, I didn't watch all the ERL games, but those are just the ones that I saw. So maybe my sample size well, is shit. Go, um, so I wasn't a big fan of 113. There would be games where lanes would be winning and then he'd lose the lane for them by accident or something stupid like this. Um, Dior, I think, was promising. Small champ pool. Uh, 113, I also heard, has a small champ pool. Kobe is... I f I I feel bad for Kobe sometimes. Um, Younghoon was good. Younghoon, Younghoon was a good surprise. And Finn is all right. You know, he's not going to be the best top laner. He's not the worst top laner. He's, he's just stable. I think, I don't know. I think they have a problem in mid. I don't think Dior is like, I think he's probably the worst mid laner out of everyone here. I don't know about Ruby. This is the one person I don't know anything about. But I think he's probably the worst mid laner. 113 is probably the worst jungler. And if you have a weak mid jungle in EU, then you can basically throw everything else out the window. I think they're going to be last place. Probably last place. Maybe they'll flip a few games and win. Um, but obviously the way the system works now is if you're bottom two after the first, I don't know, two or three weeks, you're out. So my, my guess is Astralis is one of the teams which are out. And then we'll go to the, to the next team, which is normally bottom of the barrel, SK. SK, I think, I think Markun is good. I, I actually think Markun is really good. I don't think he's top tier, but I, I think for, for a team like SK, he's an upgrade. I think he's an upgrade over Gilius. Easily. Markun is... The only problem Markun has, he's a little bit cocky. He's a little bit of a cocky cunt, you know what I'm saying? He, like, this guy talks smack, which is good sometimes to have, especially if you're on a, a bottom tier team. He's still young. He's still really good. I think he's better than Gilius. I think they've upgraded their mid jungle. Their bot lane, they lost Treats and Jezu. Treats, Jezu, Exa Kick, Dos. I think when you have Treats and Jezu, you kind of know what you're getting out of that bot lane. They were pretty reliable. They had a, a, a good 2021. Um, was it summer or was it 2022 spring? I don't know. They had a good... I don't know. Everyone thinks about their Jarvan support lanes with Kalista and shit. Jezu's Kalista was good. Um, and now they've brought in the bot lane from LDLC, right? And now if, if I get some of these facts wrong, then you can correct me. But uh, Exa Kick DOS, LD LDLC bot lane, they, they, they came second in EU Masters, didn't they? In spring, they lost to K Corp or something. Um, DOS and Exa Kick have always been really high elo. Uh, I, I, I think this is a good, a good risk. If you ask me, would I rather take Jezu Treats for another year or would I take a risk and go for Exa Kick DOS? I would go for the risk and take Exa Kick DOS, to be honest. Um, I've heard a lot of positive things about Exa Kick. A lot of people have this, <clears throat> I'll say it straight up. A lot of people have this perception of DOS as a toxic motherfucker. And I think he said, I'll be honest, I think he said some stupid ass shit on social media. Some of the things I've seen him write on socials are fucking dumb. In solo queue, he is a little bit toxic. But from the players that he's played with uh, and his teammates, I know that he is not toxic. In, in a team environment, no one has really said that he's that toxic. That the people I've spoken to at least. He just gets very emotional in solo queue and he tweets some stupid ass shit. So I'm not here to defend him. That's just how it is. And I think the person who I think is in the same boat is probably Leader. I think Leader was in a similar boat where everyone thought he was like this toxic, absolute unplayable teammate. Uh, and maybe he was a little bit toxic, but I don't think people like hated him for it, you know? Who was the most toxic teammate you ever played with and why is it me? Uh, I mean, there's one person who was really toxic who I played with, but I, I won't say his name because he's still playing. When he retires, I'll say it. I'm not here to fuck someone, fuck someone over or anything. Um, so yeah, I think SK is in the same boat as BDS. I think these are the two teams which will be fighting for um, top 8. I think these are the two teams which will be fighting for top 8. Alright, let's move to the next one. XL. XL have gone for like... If, if, if a super... If you, if you signed... If, if you define a super team with like S plus tier players, they've gone for a super team with like A tier players, you know? Oduwamne just won on, on, on Koi Rogue. Xerxe was probably the best performing player on Astralis. Uh, Vito was probably one of the best performing players on Misfits next to Neon. Patrick is a beast. And G2 support who, who won the split, right? Like, it's a miniature super team. 
The thing is, I don't know how well the super team is going to mesh together because there's so many pieces. This reminds me of like, this this team reminds me of Fnatic from last year, where you take Wonder from G2, you take Razork from Misfits, you take Humanoid from Mad, and you pop it into a top side. You know, that's basically what they've done. They've taken top lane from Rogue, mid lane from Misfits, jungler from Astralis, popped them together. Now, Auto, Auto Cirques, they played together in Splice, so I don't think they will have any issues. VTO is... VTO is a really good mid laner, uh, and Xerxe is... I mean, I played against Xerxe for like three years. Every single time I played against Xerxe, I always saw him as like this farming jungler. He was not like a super carry, but I think Xerxe's biggest strength that I really struggled with as a player as well was his champion pool was fucking huge. Like, you can never ban this guy out, and he'll always play some weird and wacky shit. He'll always find something, anywhere, no matter what. You can never force him to 4-5. So I think his biggest strength is his flexibility. He had a pretty all right year. Jesus Christ, man. Even though he was losing every game, I think he was playing good. And I think you can see it in the stats. Like he, he, I don't like using stats much, but he was farming a lot. He was farming a lot, even though his team was losing. I mean, I don't really blame him, but he's not much of an early game jungler. He's not going to pick like fucking Jarvan and run around killing everyone. Or uh, he's not much of a Graves player. He doesn't play that much Lee Sin either. Um, so if it goes into that kind of meta, he will struggle a bit, but he always he's he's always been a hacker Montric, Lilia, Viego, Rumble, Kane. These kind of junglers were his 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 bread and butter, like team fighters. Um I even played against his fucking uh, yeah, this was when Set Jungle was meta. Yeah, but it's, it, it looks bad, but it's, it's, he, he wasn't on the best team, right? A lot of people seem to think XL is gonna be a top tier team. It's uh, it's hard for me to buy into it. Like, if, I, if you put this XL roster in front of me, and we'll get to it later, but then you put, like, the G2 one, the Fnatic one, and I don't really want to say the Vitality one, but the Koi one as well, I don't think... I think they're maybe scraping top four. Maybe. So I, I would say B plus, A minus. I don't want to get too sold on this XL roster. Like, I, I, I'm just going to... Like, I love Odo, but is Odo in his peak? I don't know how Odo's going to perform now. Like... <clears throat> Xerxes has been around the block. He's been to NA for a few years. He's come back. He was on an all right. His team was shit. He looked all right. I don't know how much faith I have in it. VTO was in a similar boat where his team was um, pretty weak, but he still managed to, to pull it through. You know, these are, these are players w which shined on bad teams. And shining on a bad team can mean two things. One, you're fucking selfish. Or two, your team is genuinely shit and you're pretty good. But how many, how many resources are you soaking up to make it look like you're, you're good when you're on a bad team, right? I have faith in Patrick. I think Patrick's always been pretty reliable. And Targamas on G2. Uh, I don't, I don't want to put words in, in someone's mouth here, but I'm pretty sure he didn't speak much, but he was just like a mechanical beast, right? He was just a little cheeky little playmaker. So who's the voice? Um, I don't know. Odo is not going to be able to talk much from top, so it's on these three to put it through. Um, yeah, so a lot of question marks around XL. I don't want to get super bought into it, so I'll put them... For now, I'll put them here. By the end of the tier list, I might move them to top of B, but I'll put them like here-ish. Uh, but yeah, I think they'll make top six easy. Easy top six. Easy top six. Like even l last year, it was like, are they going to make top six? This year, easy top six. Uh, so I I'll probably move them down or keep them here towards the end of A tier. All right, let's do Heretics quickly. Uh, Heretics. Fucking hell, this is the one roster where I really don't know what's going to happen. It's like the boomers and the zoomers. Like, I'm going to say, I'm going to be honest, if you told me to import top... The last person I would look to import is someone like Ebi, personally, okay? For brand, fantastic. For team atmosphere, also fantastic. I feel like NA makes this mistake a lot as well, where they, like, importing Photon, importing an, an academy player or a substitute or a player who looks like they're on the up rather than a player that is at the up on the down. Berserker is a good example. Berserker was on T1 Academy, popping off. He comes to NA. He looks like one of the best players there, right? Because he is hungry. He's motivated. He's he's in his first few years of his career. He's in a different uh, in, he's in a different continent. You know, he's super motivated. Super wants to learn everything. Absolute gapper. You know. So I feel like people who are on the on the I don't want to say the, the peak, but who have been around for a long, long time. I don't know how long Evie's played for. Like, I'll, I'll say a ballpark of like six to eight years, I'll say. I mean, he's 27 years old. I'm not, also, before I go into age, I actually hate the, the notion around age in esports. I hate it. 
For some orgs, if you're 24, you're already off their list. You know that. I'm not even kidding. There's players who are like 24, 25, who people just instantly throw away because of their age. Fnatic took Rux. You know, Rux, I think he's like 25, 26. Respect. It's his debut year in the LEC and he's 25, 26 or something. Yeah, what's wrong with that? That's absolutely fine. He might be a little pop-off. And he is. He's fucking good. But because he's 25 or 26 or 27, we don't want him. Yeah, shut the fuck up, man. Rux is 28. Yeah, Faker's 26, like, Yankos is getting 27. But I get it. Orcs want to sign the next Caps. They want to sign an 18-year-old who's going to be the best and their franchise player. And that's great and all, but that only works for about one or two players. The rest of them have to be, you know, reliable. Yeah, I've heard mixed things about Evi. I mean, obviously, he's been to a lot of international events. Uh, he had some good international events where DFM did, did damage. I don't want to speak like I know him, like the back of my hand. I don't know him very well. But my personal opinion is if you want me to import it, if I'm a coach of Heretics and I look at this roster, I would not import a veteran top laner. I just wouldn't do it. I would take a fucking risk on some, like, I think I've said this before. If you want me to just give you a straight up name of who I would take a risk on, I would have, I, would have, I was watching a little bit of Challengers Korea, I would have risked it on this guy. I would have taken a flip, 20 years old, KDF Challengers. I would have signed him on the spot, instant buyout. He's finished eighth place in LCK summer uh, in Challengers, Challengers Korea. I would have taken a risk on this guy. I think this guy is really good, to be honest. Even though his team finished 8th place, I watched his gameplay. I can't even open up this shit. I think it was really good. I would have taken a risk on a rookie and see how it goes. Because the thing is, the, re the reason I would say this is because the weakest role in Europe right now is top lane. I just think it is. I think if you watch international events, the one role where EU gets exposed in more, than often, more, more, more often than not is top lane. Because it goes to... A, it goes to a carry top meta, and then boom. I feel like our top, our top laners just get outperformed, and that's it. And so if you have a carry top player in EU domestically that can play well, then I think you're already one step ahead than other teams. If your top laner can play, you know, Fiora or, or Camille or Jax, like this LPL, LCK style, then I think you're already, um, you're already flying. You can already, like, your, your team is just more flexible. A lot of EU teams play through strong mid jungle or they play through bot lane, for example. Uh, a lot of EU teams prioritize bot lane a lot. I know a lot of junglers like to path bot in EU. Whereas I think in, in, in Asia, <clears throat> especially T1 this year, if you watch Owner, Owner's first clear every time is pathing top. Like, I think Owner's, I think, I, I think after we watched the LCK the whole time, one of the conclusions I made in the, one of the conclusions I made when I was researching T1 for Worlds was the number one pathing owner did was full clear, uh, th full clear to top or three camps to top and dive or lane gank top and this would just be it and then he would leave top on an island. And that's just how it went. But EU likes to play mid bot. Uh, some Asian teams like to play early top side depending on their carry to get a small lead and then play mid bot. But I'm, all I'm saying is if you give me this roster, my personal opinion is just throwing in a wild card top. Yankos on the roster. I think Yankos is like the key. If this roster didn't have Yankos, I would put them in fucking D tier. Because I would not expect any. If they had just a random jungler, let's say they had 113, for example, I don't know. I would throw them in D tier. But because of Yankos, I think he will bring a lot to this team. And he needs to bring a lot to this team. Yes, you can call Yankos a boomer or washed or whatever. I don't think he's washed. I don't think he's a boomer either. I think Yankos is still really good. I think Yankos' peak was 2019. But uh, was Yankos the problem on G2? Not at all. I don't think so at all. Um. Was he playing perfectly? No, but he's still really fucking good. And he's still probably one of the best junglers in EU. So the only reason that Heretics is pushing their way up here is because of Yankos. And I say that, and I'll say the honest reason why I say that is because I don't know anything about Ruby. So I'm, I'm arguing that their mid jungle will be strong, but I don't know fuck all about Ruby. I've not watched any of his games. I don't know his champ pool. I don't know what he's like. So if you're asking me my opinion on their mid laner, I have not got a single clue. A few players on this list, I don't know anything about them. Chasey, Ruby, Photon, I think, are the three which I'm just not sure about. I'm looking at his, his Games of Legends here. I see a lot of Control Mages. Um, he was on Unicorns of Love. Uh, I don't know how, how far they went. They go to EU Masters, I guess. They lost to, EU, to Heretics. A lot of Azir. A lot of Control Mages. Good stats, you know, that's all I can go off. And then Jack Spectra is uh, a talent which a lot of people have been praising or, or preaching for in the LEC for a while. To be honest, I'm kind of happy he hasn't been in the LEC until now because I don't want to say he wasn't ready, but I think now he's probably in one of his best forms looking at what he did on Heretics. 
Um, so it's good that he's he's it's good that it took him this long because now I think he's re he's really like prepared for it. So this is probably the peak Jack Spectra. A lot of times we see players come to the LEC too early, they shit the bed and they get kicked like this. They get kicked in a split, they get kicked in a year, and they never come back. And it's sad because it's not that they weren't ready; it's just that they weren't nurtured enough, or they didn't have the experience, or they didn't have the stage time, or they didn't have the results in domestic leagues. And they come in, they get thrown in the deep end, they get fucking removed instantly. Uh, so I'm glad, because I don't think that'll happen to Jack Spectra. I don't think he's in that boat. I think he's got a good support by his side, Mercer. I think Mercer is, is, is decent. I, I don't think there's anything wrong with that signing. Um, support in EU is just weird right now. Like, it's, it's, it's all over the place. Like, Hilly's on the dip. Kaiser's dipping as well a bit, which were, like, the two best supports in the league. Mickey's back, and he's on the... I think Mickey's probably the best support in the EU. Like, he's playing so fucking good. Trimby as well. It's like Mickey and Trimby are, like, the best... Um, these two were dipping a bit. Target mass was a bit shaky, um, but Mercer, I, 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 it's hard to find like a really good support right now. Uh, but I think Mercer is a good signing. I think in Misfits he was a bit under underrated. Him and Irrelevant were outshone by like VTO and Neon just popping off. But um, from the outside, I feel like Mercer did his job. Um, so yeah, there's not much to say about that. I think he's got a he's got a good support by his side here. Bot lane should be decent. They should be pretty good. Uh, Jack Spectre likes. He has, he has a lot of, uh, not focus, but he, he really likes champs like Aphelio, Strave, and Kalista, I think. So um, we'll see what kind of meta we're in. I don't know if he played, let me have a look. A little bit of Zeri. Yeah, he really likes Aphelio, Straven, Kalista. I know he plays a lot of Kalista in solo queue. I don't know if that's just a solo queue thing. But yeah, um, I think they're like, I'll put them in B for now. I think they're, 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 they're pretty good. I'll put them in B for now. Yeah, this team is just the boomers and the zoomers, right? Top, and, top, top the boomers, bot the, the zoomers. So, um, and I think the most important thing is Jankos is, is very vocal. Like, Jankos is like, he asks, I think when I listen to G2 voice comms, I think an important thing that he does is if he doesn't, if no one say anything, he, ask, he asks questions. That's so important. Like, asking questions in your team game is so important. If there's no one talking, Jankos will just start asking questions. How's bot? What's bot push like? How's top? Mid push? What do you need? And this is just so good because then it makes them think about what they want to say and what they want to do. So, yeah, Jankos is the key to that, all of that, I think, to me. There's a world where Jankos didn't even have a team this, this year. Can you believe it? Mickey was running it in playoffs. I don't want to say he was... Wasn't he like playing like five games of Yumi or something? When they were play, wasn't, what did happen? They played against Fnatic. They were up 2-0. They got reverse swept. The information that I'm going off that he was the best support is... Number one, a lot of pro players. Um, and I, the reason I value pro player opinion is because... The pro players that say these words are... I think they've got very good... Like, what's the word? Uh, weight behind their opinion because they say a lot of them said yeah the best bot lane is Mickey Patrick they're just so good like I think a lot of people even said in interviews as well or on Euphoria or these pros are just saying that they're the best and then when you look at their games they look like the winning piece of XL like how is XL winning games I mean bot lane is carrying right uh, credibility I guess is a good word so the reason I say Mickey is one of the best supports is because of the weight of the, the amount of opinions of people saying that. Oh, on top of the fact that Trimby right. is just shining on his own. Um, oh, you know, lost go, three months. Yeah, every year Patrick's carrying it. So I'm excited. Mickey hands run back for, for Misfits. But we'll, we'll go to Fnatic now. Fnatic, Wunder, Razork, Humanoid, Reckless, Rocks. So Fnatic is a really hard team to read because like... You've got Humanoid, who, for some reason, during the regular season, is just playing Talia versus Astralis, dying to every gank, going 0-8. And then you've got Humanoid Worlds, who is clapping every single mid laner at the entire tournament, playing like a man-possessed absolute demon. So, and in playoffs, he also plays really good as well. So, I think Humanoid is, like... When Humanoid gives a fuck and he's trying, he's the best mid laner in the whole league. I, I, he is. He is definitely the best mid laner in the whole league. Maybe like Peak Caps is up there as well. You know, they're like, they're like Goku and Vegeta, you know. But um, Humanoid had something in Worlds that, I don't know, I haven't seen from, from, from him ever. Um, but then he has times in the regular season where he just doesn't care and he, he loses and nothing happens. Yes, he played a lot of Azir at Worlds, but the fact that he's able to do it against such good mid laners is just impressive, I think. Just impressive. I guess the biggest thing to talk about is their bot lane. <clears throat> now, if you think about it, okay, Fnatic wouldn't have made playoffs 
if upset didn't carry them two or three games in a row on Zeri, right? How is it two? How, is, how many games was it? They had to win and then win again and then win a tiebreaker, didn't they? Pog, let's go. Like that, that, the, the reality is that's what that's the state Fennec was in. One they, year, heck yeah. They were one or two games from not even making the playoffs. They, oh yeah, they had to go 3 0. And then they played a tiebreaker for whatever, but they had to win all three games. Otherwise, they were out. And then um, the first game was against Astralis. They won. The second game versus Vitality. Upset. Like, look at this. Single-handedly put them over the line. And then against Misfits, he did it again. I think Fnatic's bot lane was, was really good last year. Uh, I think Upset Hilly were top tier. Hilly, was, Hilly had some moments that were just like... I mean, the Hilly moments got even worse. Like, Hilly was having... He was running it a lot, let's be honest. <clears throat> Upset next to Rux looked really good at Worlds. The sample size was really small, but um, I think the, the main conclusion is Upset was really good. And I'll, I'll say my opinion on this. I'll remove... I don't want to talk about, like, work ethic or team atmosphere because there's a lot of... A few Reddit threads about Reckless going around about, like, hard to work with. Maybe Upset had some hard to work with comments as well. Raw player, I think Upset's better than Reckless. I just think he is. I, and I say that because the way Reckless has, has functioned in teams oftentimes is... I mean, he's been reliable as fuck. It's just true. Reckless has been like a rock. Reckless is the kind of player where you can give him one of the worst matchups in the game and he can may probably go even. But Upset will never allow himself to play the worst matchup in the game. He will be honest. He'll say, I am not playing this bot matchup. It is bad. I need a winning bot matchup. Whereas Reckless can say like, yeah, I can pick Estrel here. I can pick Tristana. I can pick Sivir. I can pick Senna. It's fine. Like I can go 4-5. I can drop draft. Like if we get a winning top side, that's fine. I can play whatever here and I'll go even. And that's good in, it, in itself as well. Having that in a team is also quite important, you know? Like, a very good example of that is Damwon 2020, where Ghost can just play Ziggs and, uh, um, and, and Nuguri can just play Camille, you know? And if your top side is good, then you need a player that can do this. You can't have a really fucking insane top side play fucking Darius and Camille and then have your bot lane playing a Caitlyn lane, you know? Like, your jungler is... If you're a jungler and your, your bot is playing fucking Caitlyn and your top lane is playing Darius or, or Camille, how can you play? Like, you're both your side lanes need so much help and so much focus and so much... It's really hard, TLDR. Um, so let's put that into context, right? You, you think of Wunder. I think of Wunder as a similar player. I don't think... I don't see Wunder as a pick-me-Fiora, pick-me-Camille. I don't see Wunder as a first-pick Fiora kind of player. I see Wunder as like a... Yeah, I can go Gragas here. Yeah, I can go whatever here. I can pick this here. Yeah. So I feel like they have two solo lanes, which are kind of happy to go with the flow and maybe don't have as much carry potential to leverage that the other side will do something when you go into this weaker form of draft okay so then it comes down to mid and it zooms in on mid right you look at mid and you're like so then i guess mid jungle will carry um <clears throat> and if you're having two side lanes which are I mean, this is not what they will do, but if you have two side lanes of traditional players who historically like to play more for the opposite side, then it just means that mid-jungle don't have lanes to play towards. They have to play for themselves, right? Now, this is all theoretical, right? There's things that they can do that maybe they can fix this. I, I don't think Reckless is a stranger to picking uh, a pushing bot lane, you know? I don't know how much Reckless, how, how much Caitlyn Reckless has played or how much Varus he's played or how much Zeri he's played recently. But I don't think he's a stranger to doing it. I just think he is more comfortable playing more like, you know, chill lanes. Do I hate Reckless? No. Do I think Reckless is a bad signing? No. Do I think Reckless is a bad idea to carry? No. Because the thing is, when I say words like upsets better than Reckless, a lot of people will say, oh, Cajun, you think Reckless is dog shit? You think Fnatic's going to lose everything? No. I'm just putting into perspective how I feel both these players play. Um, and so when I see two side lanes which are more giving than, you know, they, they're more, they, they like to give more than actually um, soak up more, I guess is a good way of saying it. I don't know. Then it comes down to mid-jungle. So I, 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 I don't know because Humanoid is so inconsistent domestically. He is, and Razork, I feel like Razork was a carry jungler. 
But I don't know what happened to him on Fnatic. Like on Misfits, he, he looked like a carry jungler. But when he joins Fnatic, and maybe it was meta, he just became a poppy trundle player. And he just ran around like hot, dizzy half the time getting pulled around the map. Um, whereas if you look at him on, 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 on like Misfits, his Lee Sin, his Xin Zhao, like his, he was fucking everywhere. So I feel like Razork was juggling a lot of f potatoes, you know? Trying to carry all of these falling fucking structures. And maybe that's because of internal issues, or whatever it could be. Um, but I, I, I'll put Fnatic next to XL somewhere. A lot of people are like putting Fnatic S tier, they're putting Fnatic best team in the league. I, don't, I, I can't buy into that just because of the theory of how the team functions from players. If you can prove me wrong and show me that uh, Reckless and Rux can play hard carry bots, pushing bots, or Wunder can first take things like Fiora or whatever, then um, I'm happy to be proven wrong. But until then, um, I don't really, I don't really put, want to put them on S tier. I think A tier is fair. I think there's two teams that I think are in S tier right now. Um, but yeah, I don't want to overhype Fnatic because if they perform well, I don't want to take away anything from what they've achieved. If they do finish first, then that's really impressive. That's incredible that you've been able to do this with what I think are players in these realms and you've pulled it off. And if you don't pull it off, then there's some work to do. But I'm really excited for Rux. I think Rux has deserved a shot for so long. And whether this team does well or not, I am just happy that Rux is here. I, I just am. How many times does this fucker have to prove that he deserves a chance in the LEC? Whether it's on Fnatic, whether it's on a bottom tier team, a top tier team, how many fucking times does he have to prove that he deserves to be here? It's about time, honestly. And I can't wait to see what Rux brings. I don't, know what, I don't know what he will bring. I know he's very talkative. He likes to, you know, get things done. He likes to be active. He likes to get shit, shit happening. Is he the kind of player that roams a lot? Is he the kind of player that calls for dives a lot? You know, we'll see what kind of, like, what he leans more towards. Because what I will say is, the final thought on this is, a lot of these things that I'm saying as theoreticals, of things that they will lean towards, you know, like weak side, you know, shot calling. Pro players can basically do all of these roles, you know. I don't think Reckless is going to struggle to play a carry or a weak side. I don't think Wunder is going to struggle to play a carry or a weak side. It's more so, what are they better at or what do they lean more towards? And when you lean in one direction and you all lean in the same direction, then it kind of looks like, well, where's our flexibility? You know, I guess is a good way of saying it. I think Koi is... I'm going to put them in S or top of A. It's really hard for me to decide because it all comes down to Shigenda. So what Koi have done, for context, Shigenda was, I think, the best top laner outside of LEC. I think in, in, in domestic leagues, Shigenda was the best top laner, hands down. <clears throat> and when I say best top laner, he was a carry top laner as well. Okay, I'll just show you some... Now, I don't want to read too much into numbers, okay? But let's look at Shigenda. Let's, let's not... I don't want to over-index on numbers, but over a course of 45 games in ERLs, he has an average CSD of 25. That is... He's like a mini Alfari, basically, you know? That is ridiculous. Cabo Shard was also fucking insane, but raw lane phase... Just raw lane phase, Shigenda was one of the best easily. Um, raw lane phase, he was one of the best. Now, I'm not going to sit here and say I've watched all his ERL games. You know, some people are saying, you know, Adam shot on him, Cabo shot on him, whatever it may be. Sure. The only thing I can go off is this and what I've heard. And I know that he is a carry top laner. This one Orn, yes, but the rest of it is just pure carries. And I guess what, what, what Koi is doing... Cabo shot sets? Yeah, we can look at them quickly. Also, what's happening to Cabo shot? Why is he staying he's, uh, 20? He's got good sets as well, really good sets. Why is Cabochon on the LEC yet? Wait, does he say no or something? <laughs> anyway, I'm not going to look at numbers and then just make conclusions. But from what I've heard, and then plus the numbers, this is the only conclusion I can draw, is uh, that, that what, what Koi is doing is they're saying, look, Oduamne was playing... Um, Oduamne was like our, our, our weak side, you know, tank the fucking gank. Uh, like, he will pick... I mean, what did he do? He picked Orn into Gwen in the finals, was it? Against, against BB, and he solo killed him on Orn or something, didn't he? Or Maokai, I can't remember what it was. Um, he got counterpicked. Uh, he blinded Gwen Orn, he got counterpicked. He, he fucking solo killed him. And then he played Maokai or something. Then he played Renekton, whatever it may be. Any kind of weak side champs. 
And what they're trying to do is have a carry top. And um, maybe they think that's their way to success. I guess the coaching staff think that's their way to success because they could have signed a top laner that's more reliable in a way, but I don't know how, uh, I don't know how the team function now. I think Malrang will still be a psychopath. I think Larsen will still be reliable as fuck. Comp and Trimby is an incredibly good bot lane, I think. Would, you, would I say Comp and Trimby is the best bot lane in the league? Mm, yeah, I, I think they are. It's hard because Hans Mickey sounds really good. The problem is Hans Mickey is very name carried, you know. I think Hans' season on Team Liquid was pretty dog shit and he played terrible um, for what he's supposed to do. But uh, yeah, I think, yeah I, I think I'd happily say that Comp Trimby are the best. Uh, and Malrang is probably the, one of the best, if not the best jungler as well. It's hard to say though, because like meta is really important for jungle. You know, if it's gonna be, if it's gonna be a Graves Wukong like uh, Lilia meta, then how does like I don't know? I mean, I look at Malrang, I just think of Jarvan and Poppy or something like that. Yeah, Jarvan. Uh, I just look at Jarvan and I'm like. What counters Jarvan? Well, Wukong is really good into Jarvan. Lee Sin is really good into Jarvan. I mean, actually, everything is good into Jarvan. It's just what... I, like, look at his look at his stats. This is Maorang's stats. He's minus 15 CS at 15 minutes. He's down, like, four camps, basically. He's never ahead, ever. He's down XP. He's down gold. He's down in everything. He is literally running to lanes. And this is a playstyle. You know, this is how you play on Jarvan. Like, if you're ever... I mean, I think I said this before. If you're ever 0, 0, 0 on Jarvan at 15 minutes, you've lost the game. Like, you're griefing. He will... The reason he's like this is, one, he will run to almost every lane and gank. Now, I use gank in quotations because ganking in pro play is quite hard because, obviously, your communication is good and you know where the enemy jungler is a lot of the time. But if you're creative, you can Look, get freaky that. with it and just... I think the best way to say it is, like, pro play is a lot about probability. You know? If they start bot side... For example, a very easy one, if bot lane leashes, let's say, it's likely they're pathing top, but he could do three camps and then lean to your side and still gank you. Probability of that is pretty low, and Malrang always goes for the option that you think won't happen, you know? If, if I think he's pathing top and I'm gonna go, and I say to my team, yeah, I'm gonna go fight him on his top side blue, and then he ganks bot, it's like, well, it's really bad for him to do that, because now I will take his whole top side, and if this play didn't work out, he was fucked, but it worked. Why did he do that? But it worked, though. So, sucks for you, buddy. So, he's that kind of player, you know? So, he will fall behind and lose his, his sides of his, his camps for plays which you, sh you expect him not to go for. And then I guess because it's Malrang, maybe you can expect it, but then he just keeps doing it on everything. So, um, yeah, I, 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 it's a bit difficult to explain without kind of like showing you in, in practice, but um, yeah, in some metas it's more punishing is my point, right? If they're playing Graves or Lilia and you give him three quadrants of jungle, that's really bad because he's going to power farm you, he's going to invade your second respawn, he's going to be levels up. But if they're playing like Trundle, like a slower clearer or a champ that also needs to gank, then it's more of like a... Well, it's not really worth him to take my camps. Trundle farming is useless, you know? Does that make sense? If they have champions that soak up farm really well uh then it's really good for them but i guess the malrang buff is that now in jungle you do 16 percent less damage to enemy camps right or well yeah i guess you do more damage to your own camps which means you do less damage to their camps you know so i guess he's buffed a bit he's buffed because you can't count the junglers quickly i guess uh so yeah uh it's 16.6 yeah, shut up it all comes down to how top lane does i think they're the other four of their players are best if not top tier in their role so i'll put them in soft s right now top of a it's hard because i the only reason i want to do that uh, yeah i'll put them we'll put them here for now put them in s i think they're really good i think they're i think they're gonna be really good i was a rogue doubter at the start of the year i thought Malrang's playstyle wouldn't work out but it did so i can't doubt it again okay uh, let's move on to mad lines so mad lines i think they have the most psychotic absolute insanity fucking 0 10 10 0 absolutely in your face giga chad nutcase joker arc bot lane i've ever seen in my life like carsey on vitality was he he had a terrible year absolutely terrible and hillisang had a i think his start of the year was okay but towards the end of the year he had a really bad year as well like 
a lot was going on. Now, Carsey in lane, I think off the top of my head, he was okay. In lane, he was okay. But his biggest problem was on midwave. I remember countless times of watching Carsey and Lebrov standing on mid, clearing the wave and just dying on midwave over and over again. They walk up to the enemy carry. They walk up thinking that they're fine on both sides. They just die, lose Nash, die, lose Nash, die, lose Nash. This happens all the time. El Yoya, I think, is top two jungler in the league, though. El Yoya, fucking beast. I think El Yoya and Niski, domestic mid-jungle, are probably one of the best at snowballing sides. I mean, you saw it all year long. They get, they get a lane rolling. They get bottom top rolling. They get something rolling, no matter what. No matter what, they get a ball rolling somewhere. So that's their shining light. Their mid-jungle is their shining light. Chasey? I don't know fuck all about Chasey. I don't know anything about Chasey. If someone could give me a TLDR, that would be great. I know he played for X7. I don't know how good he was. I don't know how bad he was. I think if you're playing in the NLC, it's hard to draw a conclusion because, I mean, I don't know if you're really playing against real top laners then. Like, uh, I don't want to like shit on that league too much, but if you're importing a Korean top to play in the NLC, then I don't really think there's a good sample size of like results that you can conclude. Like, I don't think you're playing against real top laners. Um, I guess when you get to EU Masters, you are. Yeah, I, 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 I don't know how, how, how good their top laner will be. I kind of want to put them in like B tier, like my A minus B, somewhere on the Heretics area. I think their mid jungle, I think you can't put them in C because of their mid jungle. I think you can't put them higher because it sounds like, now if, if people summing up Ch Chasey by saying one dimensional player per my aggro and will sprint it if punished, I think I could take your words and copy paste them for their bot lane as well. So I feel like both sides are the opposite of Fnatic sides, you know? Wunder, Reckless, Rux, probably never gonna die. Easy, under their tower, probably outplay dives. Very respectful. Chasey, Karzi, Hillisang, two versus treeing, one versus twoing, diving the opposition, overextending, while enemy jungler spot, you know? I, I feel like it's just the opposite, you know? It's fucking opposite day. Uh, so I'll put them around here. I don't know, maybe it can go one way or the other. One way or the other, I guess it could go. I'm excited for it. I'm excited for it though. Like as much as it's like it's keck and it's int and it's dog shit, it makes the game fucking fun to watch. If these fuckers are going for 2v3s or they're just fucking flanking on Nami, then dude, I'm all here for it. Dude, I will get my keck W. I'll be in the fucking Twitch chat like this. And I'll be fucking I'll be fucking waiting with my keck L, waiting for it to happen, and then it'll fucking happen. <laughs> you know? That's that's fucking that fucking love that. <laughs> That's fucking great. Last two teams. We'll go, we'll go G2 first. So G2 have swapped around a lot, actually. I don't know when the last time they swapped around this much was. They had the Perks Wunder era, and then they swapped out... Uh... Yo, Avid, tier three, five months. Thank you so much for the five months. You're crazy. Of tier three. Oops. Oops. So G2 had the, had the, the caps, uh, you know, Wunder, Jankos, Mickey, 2019, Aware, Saj moment. Then in 2021, they brought in Reckless and they swapped out AD Carry. Perks left. 2022, they oh, brought in BB cool. instead of Wunder. They brought in um, Flacket Targamas. So now is another kind of revamp, you know, they kept BB caps and they got really, Jankos is out, Flacket is out, Targamas is out. They brought hands back from NA. We'll start with Hans. I think a lot of people agree that Hans probably was playing absolutely terribly in, in TL. Like his his team fights were really weak. He was making just really stupid mistakes in random team fights. And they eventually didn't go to Worlds. Um he struggled a little bit. I heard there was some problems with for him. I spoke to Bjergsen a bit about it. He had a few issues. I don't want to get into them too much, but he struggled with a lot of things and he wants to come back to Europe. And then the second he came back to Europe, he got rank 1 in 3 weeks. He sat there and played solo queue non-stop and got rank 1 in 3 weeks. So, I think his drive is still there. Like, he... I, I don't want to rule him out at all. I, I, I'm pretty sure Hans will be fucking insane this year. I... From what I've heard and what he struggled with in NA, I don't think he's going to struggle with that in EU. Let's go, man. And now he'll be really focused. 
Yo, Cabal, thanks for the resub. So I'm, I'm really confident in hands. BB, I think BB domestically is one of the best top players in the league. Um, at Worlds, he struggled a lot. Like getting solo killed as Fiora versus Sejuani was probably all time, you know, lowest moments of like, wow, what is going on? If there's any top laner that I see as last year as uh, as the EU carry top, it was Broken Blade, and he went to Worlds and he got shit on a bit. Yeah, it's just the reality of it. But back domestically, I think he'll still be the best, the best carry top laner in the league. So, um, yeah, I think he, he, it's as it's much as I want to, uh, it's as much as it's laughable that he died in that 1v1 or that he struggled or that, you know, he picked Riven or whatever you want to say it was in, in internationals. I think you can't really disagree that he is the best top that EU has on carries right now. As, unless Shigenda proves that wrong or Photon or, or Chasey or any of these top laners, I don't know. So I think he's top tier. Yike is, Yike for me is like the turbo signing. As much as I'm going to miss Yankos and the amount that Yankos brought, if this Yike signing works out, then I think G2 might hit an, like might ascend to another level. Because I've only I haven't watched I'm not going to sit here and say I've watched all of his games, but I've heard so many insane things about him. I've heard Wait, let me get his lol pros up. I've heard so many like I've heard that he is like the next the next best jungler in the league. Um Caps is is, is Caps Madness. like as much as caps can be craps, caps is also claps, and like we saw a little bit of claps this year. Claps is slowly fading a little bit, but I don't think he's a player you can ever doubt. The thing that pisses me off about rating G2 is over the last few years, everyone says that I'm really G2 biased. I don't know why. Maybe, I mean, maybe I do know why. It's because in spring I said they were going to win, and in summer I said they were going to win. And then I get called G2 biased. I don't know why. Like, is there a reason you think I'm G2 biased? For some, re some people on Reddit were like, oh yeah, Kajos like close friends with caps. Dude, do you wanna show? Do you wanna, dude, do you, wanna, do you wanna see my DMs with caps? I'll show you my DMs with caps right now. People are saying like I'm friends with caps. Yeah, let's look. Yeah, he doesn't even follow me on Twitter. You fuck. I can't even DM him. You stupid. Dude, I can't even. D he doesn't even follow me, man. I don't know caps. Yeah, I, I see him sometimes. I wave. I say hello. I'm also, dude. I don't know Yike. BB, I've met a few times. Hans, funny story about Hans. The only time I've ever spoken to Hans was in a hotel room. In a hotel room in 2017 in Challenger Series. I, we, we, we both played against each other. Millennium versus Copenhagen Wolves. And, uh, and I won against him in the best of five and knocked him out. And he was really upset. And he was like drawing um, his pictures in 2017. And he was telling me that he wants to stop pro play and go into, uh, go into drawing and just retire full time. And I said to him, like, dude, are you fucking crazy? You're like 16 right now. You're 17. You're so fucking good. Why the hell do you want to retire after losing one series? He's like, yeah, but I don't know how good I'll be. I was like, dude, what are you talking about? He's like, yeah, I want to go into drawing. That's not like the only time I've interacted with him. Hence, I was just like talking to him while he was drawing and he was considering retiring at 16. I was like, dude, are you fucking, are you fucking high, Hans? Like, chill the fuck out, bro. You've got your whole life ahead of you, your whole year. Give it a few more years, see what happens. And then like... I think it was 2016 or 2015. Yeah, 2016. I knocked him out of Challenger Series. And then I went to his hotel room because he was really upset about it. And uh, he was considering retiring. But then a year later, he went to... Uh, a year later, he went to Worlds with Misfits, wasn't it? 2017? Something like that? Um, and Mickey... Mickey, I, I, yeah, I know, I know Mickey now and then. I think he's... He's, um, I think he's a really cool guy. I like Mickey. Mickey's funny. Mickey's a little memer. He plays Dungeons and Dragons with me sometimes. But yeah, I don't know. Anyway, I don't know what I'm talking about. A lot of people think I'm like this fucking... I have this fucking belief in G2 that I'm like best friends with someone there or something like that. Dude, I don't. I, I, don't. I, just, I just said that they were going to win spring and then they were going to win summer. And I, I got summer wrong. My bad. I'm sorry. Dude, stop linking me British. I think G2... The thing is with G2 is they're in S tier right now. I'll give you a few reasons why. One, I think they have the best carry top. Two, I think Caps is always and will be Caps. Number three, Yike is probably one of the most hype signing of the, of the entire offseason. I know that Yike was wanted by almost every single team that didn't have a jungler on contract. Um, I think their bot lane will be really strong as well. I think Mickey X and Patrick were one of the best bot lanes in the league from you know what people were saying. Um, and you could see it from the outside as well. 
And uh, I think Hans had a bad year in TL, but he'll be he'll bounce back. I think BB is the same. BB is in the same boat as as, as Hans a little bit, where they go to NA, they win or they lose, whatever it may be, they come back and then they still play good if not better. Um, and on top of the fact that I hate, listen, I, I said this like I think I said this at the start of the the, the thing. I think reading into preseason scrims is useless. Okay. It's really useless, whether you're overperforming or underperforming. Like, I think in 2020 in XL, we had a week in the first two weeks of preseason scrims where we like 5 0 Origin, we like 4 1 Schalke, we like 5 0 uh, someone else, like Vitality, I think it was, with Skeens. And we had like a week of like scrims where we went like 26 and 3 or something. And we were like, holy fuck, we're gonna fucking, we're gonna fucking win everything. Then we got shit on in the first week. Actually, we went like 1, we went like 2 1. But in the second week, we got shit on. It was horrible. So, I don't know. But I've heard from every team that G2 is just incredible in scrims right now. Now, the thing is, the only reason I'm not sure if they're going to win spring is because you put them on stage and tell me how they do. Because I always am skeptical when players go on stage. Because I know some players just crack. They, they just fucking break on stage. And that's just how it goes. They're scrim beasts. It takes them years to come out their shell. Like, Upset's a very good example. Upset in scrims when I played with them in Schalke in 2018, 19, incredible, fucking unbelievable. You have no idea. Lane Kingdom against everyone. You go on stage, and that took him a couple years to shake off. Now he's now he's now he's like he was on on, on scrims. Now he's like properly there. Magi Felix is good, another good example. Magi Felix in scrims. Phew, are you fucking mate? If you could get Magi Felix in scrims on a stage game, you would be fucking shocked. Never happened. He could never do it. He could never shake it off and get on stage and play like he did. And that's the sad part. Like, you have these, these people who are fucking incredible. They go on stage and that's it. So that's it. That's the last thing I'll say. Yike on stage. That's all I'm just concerned about. How is he going to play? Will he break or will he not break? If he doesn't break, I think they might win spring. But if he doesn't break, if he does break, then I think this team could struggle a lot. Just, yeah, that, that's the last thing I'll say. I've just seen everything that happened to so many players. All right, Vitality. Vitality. Ooh, baby. Vi Why did it go in D? Yo, 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 yo. They're not D. They're not D. I promise. I promise. I promise. Right, Vitality. Listen, I like to get evidence, compound the evidence, make a conclusion. Okay? I don't like going off of theoretical what ifs when it comes to like actual decision making. Okay? So we'll start that with Bo. Okay? Bo. Best jungler in, the, in solo queue right now, in, in EU West, hands down. This is not just me saying this, he's just the best jungler in solo queue. Second fact that you can bring up, he has played competitively only 10 games in his life. I'll show you right now. He has not played in season 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Maybe he's played in other games, in, in other leagues. But for LDL, or in LPL, he played 10 games, season 11, right there. Only one I can click. He went 10-0. He joined FPX. He was unfucking believable. He was single-handedly destroying everyone. I watched those games. I saw them. I saw them live. It was he joined an FPX which was struggling a little bit. He came in and he shit on everyone. It wasn't even funny. Okay. So these are these are the evidence points. One incredible in solo queue. Two made FPX look like a whole different team. Okay. So it's impossible. For you to sit there and tell me that there won't be something special about this player. You, you can't... You, like, like, there is nothing more you can achieve to make it look like a player is going to perform. The only thing that's going to hold him back is language barrier. Okay? The only thing is language barrier. Okay? Or his own mental of tilt or whatever it may be. Okay? But from what I know about Vitality is Bo has been having English lessons since last year. Since... Because they signed Bo during summer. And he, he's been getting English lessons since then. He's been getting English lessons since summer. So I presume with four or five months of lessons, he should be all right. It, it, much better than some players who are just thrown in the deep end of like, yeah, you're, you're coming over, we'll, we'll give you English lessons once a week. So he, 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 knows, he knows some English, which is good already. So that covers off that weakness slightly. So very excited for Bo. Okay, I started with Bo because a lot of, I think a lot of people are excited for Bo. The only thing 
uh, that I will say about Bo is um, the one story I have heard is that he's a fucking nutcase in scrims. Absolute psychopath. Running to your camps, fighting you one versus two, dying but getting the camp, or killing you and getting the camp and the game's over. Like, he has been a bit of a flip. He has been a little bit of a, a flippy, you know what I'm saying? He likes to just run in full send and just see what happens sometimes. So he is bringing a little bit of LPL flair. You know what I think this is? Just a, just a, a quick comment. Having people like Bo and like Malrang in the league is going to be so good for EU. Because these are players that should bring completely new playstyles from their regions. Like EU got shafted by the non-stop ganking playstyle. Now they're going to get shafted by the non-stop e invading playstyle, hopefully. And it just makes the players better. Like it just does. Perks has been a bit quiet, I think, also community-wide for the last year or so. I think he's been playing all right, you know. I, I think his games, his games are all right. He's dying randomly to a lot of stuff, but he's he's had games where you look at him and you're like, holy fuck! Like this this game against G two, for example, like as an example, where he is playing fucking well, and then he has games where he struggles, um, like the XL game, for example. Um, he, I don't know, a lot of a lot of. I don't know what to say, how to say it, like public perception or attention or spotlight. Hasn't really been on perks that much. Is he bad? I don't think he's bad. I, I, I don't think perks is bad at all. I, is, he like, is he like the best? It's, I don't think he's the best yet either. But a lot of things were happening in Vitality. I don't know, like Alfari has now taken a break. So he was obviously going through some things. His jungler swapped like three times. His bot lane was getting caught on midwaves every fucking game. Karsian, Karsian Lebrov would walk up on a midwave and die. I, I don't know how much blame or responsibility to put on perks for these losses. But I don't think a lot of it is on his shoulders. Um, so I don't want to rule perks out. Um, is he washed? I don't think he's washed. I think if perks is going to show us this year that he's still perks, it's, it's, it's with this roster. If Perk struggles with this roster, I think that's it. Uh, I think you rule him out. That's it, done. But you look at what he did on C9, and you're like, wow, okay, so he just brought this team to a... a I don't want to say single-handedly, but, you know, he joins the roster, and they get to the quarterfinals. And a lot of things that a player brings, you also have to understand that it doesn't come from just what you see as a viewer on the screen. It also comes from a lot of behind-the-scenes things, you know, implementing... Like, uh, Fnatic's a good example, where you have three players on a top side who come from different teams in 2022... And everyone wants to play a different game. And you have to teach them all the same game. Whether it's like concept names, how to play off the concepts, timers. These are all things that you have in different, different players engraved. Because they've played the game and learned the game differently. And Perk seems like a player who can you know, bring that together. Because you know? um, it happened on C9 quite well. It didn't actually pull off on Vitality very well. But I think Vitality just had a lot of like, player issues. Um... So I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know what to think about perks. Neon on Misfits was really impressive, actually. Yo, Xavi, thanks for the resub. Wait, tier one for six months in advance. Oh, you're fucking crazy. Thanks, man. I really appreciate that. You're nuts. Neon on Misfits was... Uh, I think his biggest highlight was his team fights. Like, his team fighting was really, really good. He was a very, like, hard... I don't know how to say it. Hard to kill player. Uh, VTO was like the shining light, but Neon was un underrated as hell. Like he was, he was ga games against G2, he was almost single-handedly carrying them over the finish line. Um, so I think that's a good signing. I think if, if Vitality went this offseason looking for an AD carry, um, who would you put top of the list that wasn't signed, you know? You look at the, the league, Patrick and Comper signed. Um, you, you've just got to go for a rookie or someone like Neon who was performing really well on Misfits. So, yeah. Or they go for Upset. But that's a whole new wheelhouse of baggage. So we don't get into that. And then Kaiser, who I also think is like slightly in the hilly boat. He was struggling a bit this year on Mad. He's, I think he's a little bit in the hilly boat of kind of on his own planet sometimes. So hopefully they can bring that back. Photon. So Photon is basically the other question mark. Um... They've they basically got a they've got a Chinese player, they've got a Korean player, and three EU players. So I don't know how long Photon's been learning English, but there's definitely gonna be communication issues here. Definitely. I don't know if Photon can speak Korean, uh, Mandarin, sorry, or if Bo can speak like a little bit of Korean. But that top jungle, 
if if Photon hasn't been learning English, I feel like there's if any teams gonna have language issues or language barriers, it's it's Vitality that's gonna be holding them back. Um, I didn't watch many of Photon's games, but they came second to Nongshim, I believe, in uh, in Chandler's Chandler's Korea. Um, oh shit, wrong thing. They came second to Nongshim. He was playing a lot of tanks. Um. That's about all I can tell you. I don't think this is some kind of like incredible psycho carry top coming out of nowhere, fucking Nuggery 2.0 baby, fucking the shy. Okay. He just looks like a bit of a tank player. I saw him playing Akshan in. Um, fuck, there was a tournament recently. Was it? Was it Kespa? Was he playing in Kespa Cup? I watched oh, a little bit of Kespa Cup. He was playing. Yo, Simi, thanks for the fourteen. He was playing Hello, Action Pop. Hope you and no, it was. It was. Uh, it was the the LCK versus LPL amateur um, rift rival thing, wasn't it? He was playing Asian Challenger, fucking uh, amateur, something like that. He was playing Action. I think they did they win. I think they won. I don't know. I've never seen one game where he was playing Action. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm not sure how Photon will do. But uh, he's young. He's from T1, T1, T1 Academy. Uh, they came second in the league. Not bad evidence, you know? I mean, there's, what, what more do you want from a player, you know? Um, I wouldn't be able to tell you who the main carry on that T1 Academy was or who was popping off the most or the reason they were winning. But um, Bobby said that he already speaks English at a decent level. Good. Good, good, good. I think this team, I would attribute the best stat for this team, I would say time. For these two players to adapt, the longer the season goes on, they, the better they would be. Um, I think a similar thing could be applied to Fnatic as well. I think time is also their best friend. So I would not be surprised if these two teams struggle at the start of the split. Because they're quite high up on the tier list. Um, I, I'll put Vitality at top of A. I would not be surprised if these two teams struggle at the start of the split a little bit. Um, and then they bring it back. So yeah, I think that's the tier list. Uh, I don't know if you agree or disagree. I don't really like, it's your opinion, you know. I don't really care. Um, um, that's, just, that's just my brainstorm for like the last, I don't know, hour or so of like what I think should be, what I think the league will look like. Um, early split winners, I would say split winners, possible split winners, I would say... For spring, I would say the teams, I'll say a sample size of three max. I would say Fnatic, G2, and Koi would be my spring winners. Or I say spring, split one, whatever the fuck you want to call it, winter split. And then for summer playoffs, like we're talking like eight months down the line, uh, I would say Vitality, G2, or Koi. I would say something around, along those lines. So yeah, that's the ranking right there. Um, I, I think I'm happy with that. I'm happy with it. I don't know. I, I had a lot of reasons why. I feel like I'm also missing a lot of information, which is kind of annoying. You know, like um, I have so many questions about certain players that, uh, uh, that, that those, those things could change how I see the team. What, what 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 reason do I have to want to be biased to G2? Okay, the only reason people are biased is because of nepotism or past experiences. I've never been on G2. They always fisted me on stage. They've done nothing for me. I've never joined them as a content creator, and I have no friends on their team. And for some reason, I am a big fan. Why? The only player I'm a fan of is the shy and rookie. That's it. <laughs>